Perhaps what I enjoy most about my trans-temporal exploits is meeting people. All sorts of people, although it wasn't always all sorts. It used to be just the ones I had read about and fancied meeting. It is a wonderful thing to be standing in front of a six-foot-tall epileptic with a crooked nose and salad on his head, and being told to say, Ave Caesar, those who are about to die salute you. It's nice to meet the pages of your history books now and then, but to be honest, it can be greatly disappointing at times. I get my hopes up. I always get my hopes up so high that I cannot help but be let down by the reality. I get so caught up in the excitement and the anticipation, I read the books, I buy new silverware and napkins, I save up my appetite for a week, only to be crushed when I find out that Marie Antoinette doesn't give away free cake. Nero didn't play the fiddle, King Canute didn't shout at the ocean, and Lady Godiva did, in fact, wear clothing. All the time. It was a sad lesson to learn, but I've since realized that nothing is what you expect it to be. But this sad occurrence led to a joyous one. If what I expect to occur doesn't turn out to be especially interesting, but in fact extremely uninteresting, I should expect the unexpected to be exceptionally interesting. So, I stopped looking for new friends in the pages of my history books, and began to search among zones of obscurity. And I found treasures, unheard of, lost to history's chronicles because of a superficial lack of notoriety, but in my opinion should be heralded in some sort of museum of eccentricity. These are the everyday men and women, so-called because I wish I could spend every day with them. People you've never heard of, like Bold Harry, oh, yeah. the mechanic on board the RAS Blamsted in 4105. He's not a powerful king or a noted philosopher, but he's got a brilliant sense of humor, he denies to acknowledge Portugal as an official country, and he's not allowed a lunch break, so he fries eggs in the engine room on his bald head. It all comes down to what is boring and what isn't. I could go back in time to ancient Rome to visit Julius Caesar, or I could go to La Bastille in 18th century Paris and visit Francis White, an incarcerated lunatic with a three-foot-long beard who believed he was Julius Caesar. Hardly a difficult choice. He and I spent half the day tying rude letters to the legs of chickens and throwing them out of the window at passers-by. And I distinctly remember, as that last chicken fell, knocking the powdered wig off of a fat loyalist, thinking that I could do this for the rest of my life. This epiphany led me to take up a new hobby. Madman spotting! Uh, to clarify, there are three types of madmen. There are the blood-crazed, egocentric megalomaniacs who want to rule the world and try to feed you to their army of carnivorous fishmen in Cabo San Lucas. There are the ones like me, and there are the funny ones. These are the people that you see in Hyde Park at five o'clock in the morning. It's easy to spot natters like these. They usually have hair that resembles and functions as a bird's nest. Uh, they may be wearing three socks and a belt made out of shoelaces, and they'll either give you a pamphlet about their favorite apocalypse, or ask you if you'd like to buy a bridge. Hyde Park is always crawling with friendly madmen like that. I was once taking a constitutional through Hyde Park, when I was suddenly accosted by a woman wearing a dress made from curtains. I knew it was made from curtains, because it still had the rings on it. She ran up to me, grabbed me by the shoulders, and asked me if I would baptize her. Baptize me! And you know, she was just so eager, I couldn't say no. However, I am banned from every church in England after the year 1793, so I just took her to a nearby bird bath and baptized her in the name of the warbler, the swan, and the albatross. She was very grateful, but uh, slightly unconscious. It was a rather shallow bird bath. There is no shortage of interesting people in the chronosphere, but there is one that will always hold a special place in my hat. 
in 3926, in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in the derelict, rusty torso plate of a Grand Banks Sentinel automaton on the side of the road, there lives a man with one leg, one eyebrow, six teeth, and a bowler hat with a smiley face drawn on it. The neighborhood generally calls him that nutter who lives in the old robot chest and sings Blow the Man Down at three o'clock in the morning, but to me, he is known as Uncle Pim. Hello. Uncle Pim is my number one loony. He is in fact a former pilot of the Grand Banks Automaton Fleet, who now believes that he is the King of Canada. He is convinced that the pigeons of Halifax are plotting to assassinate him, he thinks that shovels are just very large spoons, and he only speaks in verse. He can't not be entertaining! The last time I went to see him, I said hello, but he wouldn't open his mouth. He just mumbled. I could see that he was holding something in his cheeks, but he refused to open his mouth and show me what it was. Until he had to breathe. And can you imagine my amazement and amusement when he opened his mouth and out popped three baby squirrels? <laughs> According to Uncle Pim, their tree had been blown down in a recent hurricane, and he was graciously providing them with temporary lodgings. I was heels over head with laughter. It's not every day you see a nut with squirrels in his mouth. <laughs>